Um, I'm pleased to welcome to you to this session. Uh, the theme of this session is typology. So we have uh, five speakers in this uh, session. So uh, let me introduce our first speaker, who is Mr. Carol Bowlers. Uh, he is assistant professor at the Faculty of Architecture, Delft University of Technology, and company direct of 3D geometries in Netherlands. Mr. Wallers uh, received the Dutch 2005 Aluminium Award for Architecture for designing the first industrial framing system for freely curved facades. Uh, Dr. Wallers in 2010 founded 3 d Geometries to develop and market industrial adjustable molds for producing freely curved facade panels of glass, composites, and concrete. He is an inventor of very well-known system, Kavir. Uh, uh, Mr. Rolas, you have 25 minutes. Thank you, I'll uh, keep to the time, I hope. Um, this is number three. I presented one and uh, first and one and two already at the CTBOH, so it's nice being with the family again. Um, 3.0, it indicates that it's uh, uh, gone onto the web and uh, that it's to be uh, uh, user maintained. I'll talk about uh, the context of uh, building websites uh, or websites, sorry, on uh, building information. I'll keep it a bit short. It's just a very short, uh, I will pass through a few of them. Then uh, our own 3D website, um, how it is um, to be developed and what we have done already. Um, I'll talk about the uh, morphology system based on the tools used in uh, software to generate curved volumes. And uh, we also will show the system that we have uh, created to enter the detailing of uh, non-orthogonal buildings. Um, so collect all that is available. And then um, shortly I will talk about uh, a mold that we are developing, uh, a pin bed. Um, with uh, Sogar, Sagar Torat, my Indian friend, it's a kind of fakir bed, so it's very uh, appropriate. And some near future developments. Um, websites, it's incredible the amount of data that is being uh, assembled on some of them. Um, there are quite a few. Every country has its own websites, and then some of them, uh, well, they all open, aim to be global, maybe. But um, there's an enormous number, and my, I'm only naming the ones that I know, and that's only in my own region, basically, or the English-speaking regions. So that's limited, but I think it's generic. <coughs> and then they have enormous uh, databases with uh, films and lots of information and staffs of 20 people working on it often. Uh, hardly any of them makes money, first five years at least not. So that's an interesting phenomenon. Um, they have, uh, some of them are um, yeah, paid for and uh, maintained by companies like the steel company ArcelorMittal. Actually, it's called Structur Structurela, uh, Structura, uh, sorry. But, uh, his own name, uh, the own name of the company is actually bigger on the, on the screen than the real name, indicating that it is focused on itself and it's kind of advertising, but also shows very good uh, steel um, yeah, document, documentation of buildings, how to uh, really build them and the projects themselves. Um, often they are either focused on specific topics like emporers or We'll pass uh, by Skyscraper City also of uh, Jan Klerks, who now works for 
CTBOH and uh, actually Emporis, uh, one of the owners, uh, Marshall, um, works for the CTBOH also. So it's, uh, we have a wonderful collection of uh, people working at the CTBOH. Um, or they, when it's not focused, they go very generic and they show uh, sculptures and anything that looks nice actually. It can be 3D printed ornaments or lamps or anything. Um, one, uh, World Architecture News on the left is one I like very much. Typical actually is that they come with news and then the every um, project it then is enters uh, into a grid and after some time they have about 100 of those pages with only uh, yeah, lots of small pictures. It's very hard to find the building after some time because it may be on page 87 and it's too small to recognize anything of the shape. Um, so they do have a keyword system or and uh, that is yeah, connected to the architects or the, the places where they have been built or the client, but not as to the shape. Um, <clears throat> some uh, commercial uh, websites are developed and we have a kind of yellow pages in Holland and every firm goes there uh, by themselves just to be published. That's an interesting phenomenon and they show all their products and then um, to counter it, the, the website themselves, they show the projects and how the, the materials have been used and they, come, they have a news section also. So it's very commercial, but it's accepted. It's um, because it's not connected to one specific firm. Otherwise, if it were the website of Arup, for example, then, and that's the same with uh, ArcelorMittal, many other firms won't col collaborate on, uh, they won't participate and enter information, they will stop it even. Um, so if you want to be generic and cover the whole world and everything, then it must be uh, neutral. The funny thing is that Skyscraper City, for example, it's uh, owned by Jan Klerks, who gave a lecture just an hour ago. Um, he has had it for 10 years, and only now he gets an income from it, whereas it has 3 million visitors uh, a month and covers all the buildings over 40 meters high in the world. So it's, it's a massive uh, website. Um, what was lacking is that uh, I'm very much interested in curved buildings, blobs or fluid uh, geometries, whatever. And um, it's very hard to find them when they're in, well, in the, in the neighborhood of uh, Guangzhou by a client that I don't know or an architect. It's uh, impossible to trace them, almost. And uh, on top of that, the information, it's, well, one might, might have come across such information in the plane or seen it in a book or just a journal or it's been on the television in the news and then it disappears and nobody after three months knows where it was actually, the, that information. Um, so we wanted to make a, a database that's easily accessible, especially graphical because that's the way of communicating these days. Um, we uh, divide it in three phases. The first one is to build the database on the, on the website, schematizing by the tools used in uh, uh, software um, to generate a shape and uh, we want it to be user maintained because it's so large the, what is happening everywhere in the world that it's uh, in, in almost impossible <laughs> especially for us just uh, to to keep it in yeah to enter it ourselves and uh, to enter all the newest uh, information all the, on all the projects um, on top of that there's a great lack of yeah, accessibility of information on how to apply curved shapes and how they are actually uh, produced. So uh, we want to show all the detailing drawings also and perspectives, which work better than drawings sometimes, especially on 3D uh, shapes. And uh, in the third phase that is still to be started is that of all the projects that are in the in the base, we have some 900 projects now. 
we want to abstract them to the underlying principles, then have those principles on a row, and then if you would connect, uh, click on a principle, then you would see the buildings where that uh, has been, uh, detail has been applied. This is the website. Um, just an introducing page and a line of recently added projects passes by, uh, changing every five or ten seconds and showing where it has been built. Um, it's built on uh, a graphical system with icons, and the icons, if you hover over, the, over them, they, uh, they are enlarged, and you, one can see how they have been, uh, uh, the volume has been generated that the icon resembles or uh, represents. Uh, we sometimes have to make own names, but they must uh, um, connect to <coughs> software, of course which is an average of all the softwares that are being applied. Uh, on the horizontal row, there are the, is it visible actually like this? It's, uh, it, it's uh, the primitives that are being used and that are as a standard in all software, it's like the cylinder, the cone, the pyramid, but that they are the normal primitives and then there are the generated primitives um, like an extruder drawing a floor plan and then <coughs> um, extruding that upward, lifting it upwards, then a volume is made. And on the left-hand side, is that possible? Can one see it? It seems very dark for me, but okay. Uh, there are the icons symbolizing the ways uh, such volumes have been transformed, so like bending or scaling or twisting or Boolean operated. In this case, it, uh, the icon of the extruder has been clicked and then all the projects in the system that are based on, ex uh, on the extruded volume are shown. And in this case, all those that uh, were Boolean operated, um, sorry, field controlled. This is uh, the symbol of the Boolean operation, I think, but okay. Um, the twisted ones, and then if you click it, you see all the twisted buildings in the world that we could find. Um, they can be built or unbuilt, um, that's still, or that uh, the operation of twisting has been used in, in combination with other transforming ways like scaling down. And we have, well, 48 twisted buildings in this case. And it's growing rapidly. If you click on one of the pictures in that line, the, the project page, it opens, and uh, the, then the small pictures re pass by, and uh, one can click through, the, through them and see the, uh, well, perspectives of the building in this uh, case. If one clicks on the picture itself, it's uh, enlarged. And scrolling down, one gets the building information. It's quite an organization, a thing like this, uh, and we only started one year ago, or one and a half. Um, most of it is uh, copied from other sites, and sometimes we add some information ourselves, and the idea is that users will enter information, additional information, and uh, we will also, we of course show where the information comes from, and we will show also what books will be uh, giving further information. Um, so we have the defined shapes that are uh, described by, the, uh, by our system, but many don't fit in it. Um, typically, um, high rises uh, only mostly had just few um, icons used, a few tools used, because they have to have a very clear um, um, shape. Uh, one doesn't want uh, the, the backside of a uh, high rise to be very different. On smaller buildings, it's, uh, uh, it's less obvious because they're the one who wants to connect more to the surroundings, for example. And some architects don't want to make it uh, related to any shaping principle at all, or they script it. Um, in this case, uh, when, we don't, when there are too many tools used to, to make the shape, we call them free shapes. And uh, in that category, we have a uh, section, we have a few categories. 
that's the ones that are simply a free form building. Then the urban plans, where parametric influences like uh, traffic or uh, sun shading or height of, uh, well, downtown, for example, can be uh, entered and be a mix uh, deciding upon the shaping of the individual buildings. I will show some examples uh, shortly. And then the, the parametric buildings that are generated by um, applying many para parameters and it's hard to foresee the outcome often at first. They are generated, it's, it's, uh, yeah, and a shape evolves and then the designer starts uh, optimizing the shape. For example, the, the free shapes, a whole list of them. Um, I won't go into it, I'm now especially going uh, through the system and you're, well, please uh, take a look at 3D.nl. There's the digital cities and uh, well you can see on the right hand side a few of those extraordinary shapes that uh, evolve or are designed of course. Um, and the parametric designs that are, um, yeah, really engineered shapes uh, often. And are often based on the same uh, pr yeah, principle of rotating, moving a line or uh, a shape. But uh, of which the sequence is not uh, clear and of which, in which the interaction of them is not clear at all anymore either. Um, and then there are many special uh, features that we like or that are important also. One can voxelate a building. It's built of voxels, uh, like a, a picture can be built of uh, pixels. Uh, free uh, dimensional volumes can be, uh, can be built of uh, voxels. And parts can be taken out. And as a global shape, it can have a 3D curve, the shape. I will go into uh, well into this one now. Uh, we didn't dare to start. Uh, it's a bit uh, um, weak not doing it. It's not uh, strong, but uh, it would be nice to show the website. But at least we know that it's working and that it's going very quick now. So now the project page is opened, and uh, well the page can be enlarged by clicking on it, and then by continuing clicking on this side, the next page. Uh, next uh, info will appear and uh, yeah, the first time one would hoover over the picture the creator the maker of the or the owner of the picture would be uh, named so we uh, try to honor honor them uh, correctly slices are um, also a quite popular way of making a globally three-dimensionally curved building but that's by protruding faca uh, balconies or louvers, for example. That way one can make the composition from flat elements and make use, yeah, apply flat panels of glass, whereas the whole picture itself would then um, have a three-dimensional uh, image. Very old one of uh, Oscar Niemeyer here. Well, they're all so interesting. It's uh, almost a fun site to visit. It is, actually. Um, green facades are interesting, of course, as they, yeah, uh, graphically and visually. I talk as an architect, of course, there's the sustainability um, part in it. And uh, the idea is that then when one enters into such project that all the details will be shown. So worldwide, uh, students, and, but also designers, engineers, will find examples of how things can be used without having to buy the books, uh, for example. Whereas if they want deeper information, they can buy the books and they will be mentioned. Um, we also started now the facade section. Um, we divided it up in skins, structures, and uh, special features. Skin is uh, the surface on the outside, the structure is the part that holds up the skin, and special features are uh, um, special effects that I will uh, show in a moment. Um, in the bottom line, we have the materials, and in this case, it's uh, 
glass that has been highlight clicked on and steel. Um, well, this composites and plastic and wood, and then ceramics, concrete, for example. And here is the geometry. <coughs> Sorry. Um, we divided them up in the single curved facade, double curved uh, facade, single curved roof and double curved roof, and um, where they fluently interconnect, it's a continuous uh, surface. And we always uh, keep to the most complex shape. So it can be a double curved building with single curved elements in it, but we then call it double curved, like here. And then it shows all the uh, buildings in the facade that are double curved. We have some hundred buildings in it, um, facades in it, in the system. And well, uh, next year it will be about 400, I think. So then it's a very popular system to be, uh, yeah, for students to refer to or to find projects or examples. In this case, uh, it's the double curved skin plus the, the steel, and then uh, it's the steel, uh, well, skin. Uh, the structure, we divide it into the grid shell. It's a one-layered uh, grid, um, often used in vaults also. The space frame, cable net, shells, and curtain wall. I will go through them uh, quickly. It's uh, indicating the system, yeah. And then the special features, we have the media facades that have a special effects, especially to lighting. Um, or messages that are being given, graphical messages, uh, news, etc. Um, and then the other one is the kinetic uh, facades where parts can move and where the facade may uh, transform as a whole. Um, well, this is one, then one of them, uh, the steel grid shell with a metal facade. And by clicking on it, again, enlarged, it uh, should give all the information about uh, the project. And uh, many buildings are not interesting as a whole, and, uh, and sometimes have a very complex shape or are, um, an assemblage of uh, a combination of various shapes, but parts of the facade are interesting. If the building is interesting, then we here have uh, also a link to the building where it uh, was used in. Um, so it's, it's the first uh, system like this in the world that has a graphic interface like this. It's uh, quite demanding for the server. Um, all the jumping about and hoovering over it, it gives a lot of, it must exchange a lot of information. So it does require a good uh, connection to the web, but it, uh, it's getting, uh, the builders, our builders are getting more and more clever in uh, easing the system. One thing is uh, building the, the website and showing how to use it and how to detail it. The other one is uh, that it should be uh, able to, to make it also, and preferably in an affordable, afford, affordable way. Um, I got a subsidy from the Dutch government to develop um, a ad computer adjustable mold to be combined with a glass furnace. Um, as a, and I'm doing that as a researcher in Delft, where I work two days a week. And um, we aim for the glass furnace uh, with adjustable mold, but as a first step to get there, we made a pin bed. Um, of course, the pin bed it will be used for many different materials. And uh, every material has its own demands. Concrete will be different, yeah, thin concrete, thick concrete, uh, uh, composites, or, um, well, any material. It's one material is not the other. It's a curved, one curved surface, it's not the same as uh, another. We have done many um, bending tests with double curved glass. 
and yeah, the market in Holland has completely collapsed at the moment for architectural glass. But in yachting, for example, there is a very interesting market. Um, but then the yachts uh, have higher, much higher demands on the quality of the bending, uh, which is a challenge. Uh, we will get there also. But then uh, architectural panels, uh, they are not the same as yacht panels. Very often uh, such glass will be, uh, yeah, have uh, for a great part uh, very little bending and then suddenly at the corner for a small motorboat uh, it, it will bend backwards. So have a very short, uh, short bending, uh, small radius at the ends. And that demands a very different surface than architectural panels that are very big and hardly have any uh, uh, curvature. So it's like saying, well, I developed a car, and then someone says, oh, fine, I've got 40 persons I want to transport, and uh, another, another one will say, and I want to plow my uh, land with it and, and harvest the grain. So it's, it's all with the same machine, but it's, it doesn't work like that. Every, it, it's a new topic, and uh, we encounter many... Uh, many variations on the a different problem every every time but so the thing is to make a, a mold that is very generic and have a high precision uh, a close field of actuators actually the actuators here um, they can all carry each carry 200 kilos and are in a quite close grid have a high precision of uh, well in the end, at the resting point at the top, it will be about half a mil, I think. So that's a nice... Mr. Uh, Wallace, two chance. minutes. Yes, two, well, one minute. Two it's minutes. finished, okay. Um, well, the mold, it's uh, on its way. In, uh, in a month, we will have this one working. It's one and a half by three meters, the, the top blade, table. And it's necessary because for architectural glass, there's a great waste in making 3D curved molds. It uh, connects to the present market because it also can make cylindrical panels and any shape can be made and it offers many new shaping possibilities, uh, this new pin bed. Near future. Um, it's a kind of ridiculous uh, or just a it comes with the start of a new phenomenon of the websites that there are many websites that are entering the same data and I expect them to be um, combining and uh, merging those websites and that a few will survive. Uh, also, I think that the detailing, for example, will be standardized so it uh, will become hard to claim who has drawn it or where it comes from so it will all be open source, I suppose. Um, and the conclusions, it's uh, clear. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we have time, one uh, or two questions. Any questions for a speaker? Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you one question. Uh, as I know, uh, you have researched a lot of uh, curved facade, and you have uh, made uh, the uh, cold vent twi twisting markup system. Mm -hmm. So you categorize a lot of uh, freeform uh, buildings here. And uh, what do you think about the uh, uh, prototyping for you know curved facade? I think you know for the much efficiency of the project. Um, so have you considering you mean the, the, the cold bending of glass as compared to the annealed glass in this case or the double curved glass right, right. Um, by heating and then cooling down. Um, they have a very different use. The, the, the cold bending had the, the great um, advantage of being produced as a flat panel from a flat panel. Um, easy transport and very low cost, only the contours had to be made uh, non-rectangular non usually. And then one had a very um, cheap way of 
making a slightly curved facade. Um, it can have a double curvature. A single curved, it's easier, although it does uh, not completely make a cylindrical surface, for example. There's uh, always the abbreviations because the glass doesn't want to bend, basically. Um, it can be bent double curved, um, like it's very clear when you have an insulated panel and the sun is, comes on it and it simply bulges inward or outward. So it, glass can take up to some extent a double curvature, but uh, for a really free, freely curved building, uh, one needs stronger curvatures and one doesn't want to be limited by the, the framing uh, necessary framing and the limitations of the framing by the cold bending. So they both cover uh, their own part of the market. All right, thank you very much.